unseen blade is the deadliest. Yo, this is the first placement game on a D2 MMR account, and I'm playing against Vega. Uh, I have Ignited Flash, so I decided to go Nimbus and Electrocute because I want to go full lethality just to try it out and look for some more builds with the new split. So yeah, let's see how it goes. So level 1 in lane, I'm a bit AFK because I'm on my phone, but you want to not push anyways, and you want to make sure you keep as much control as you can. And since we're low damage, we can't really push and keep control that way. So we let them push and then we just last hit and try to keep control of sort of just how many minions he's going to crash into your tower. And, you know, use your spells when he tries to crash too many before it crashes so that you can thin it and stuff like that. You can only really do these small little things in the early game where you don't have much damage to, you know, damage the opponent. So, yeah, right here. I know he's level 2, but I'll hit level 2 as well. That's why I woke up with the CS. And yeah, just being not taking it nice and slow. I want to kind of zone him. So I take W. Miss my spells, but that's completely fine. If you miss your WQ, all you do is just walk away. It's completely okay. And this is basically the early game. Where, you know, just trying to farm. <laughs> Always miss the CS. But yeah, and against Vega, like, you can kind of dodges Qs. I dodged a couple. So you just walk up and then you walk the other way. You can W over his cage like that. It's something you should do in lane, I think. Instead of being shy. Um, don't be shy to like use your W backwards just to like trade for his cage. And yeah, I mean, it's very, very simple early game, I would say. Um, it's a classic Zed versus Mage. So yeah. And also right here, when your wave is like frozen outside of your tower, just like this, you don't want to shove, you want to wait for the next wave, and you want to slow push it. So right here, I'm just kind of abusing it, and I can walk up, zone him off, use my WEQ if I want to. I'm just waiting for a good chance. I missed my Qs, which is really bad, but I jumped over his Q with my W, which is something you can do as well against Vega, which is pretty good. So there are some tips against Vega. And as you can see, the next wave came through. So now I can shove this one, and it's completely fine. Or I can keep slow pushing it and try to poke him with my WEQ, which would maybe help me kill him under the tower. And yeah. And then luckily my Udo is here, so it's fine. And we can shove. Or we can just like wait for the next wave and then shove the next wave. So basically how it works is you slow push the wave into the enemy tower. But you do it wave by wave. And if you feel like you can't really zone them, it's best to try and crash the wave. But... Since I was there, I felt like I could zone him, and so I'm able to stack waves. And then here I kill him, but um, notice how I have Ignite, so I have to watch the timing of when I kill him. I killed him at a moment where I can shove the wave and also base and get a good recall, which is very important when you have Ignite. And that's the early game against Vega. So Vega ends up roaming bot, and I ping a lot for the, my team to back out. And notice how the wave is on my side of the lane, and there's a lot of his minions. My team dies still, and the rookie mistake would be to try and shove this wave as fast as possible to crash it into the enemy tower. And the reason for that is there's too many minions, and it's on my side of the lane, and the next wave is a cannon minion wave, so I can deny all of it by just waiting, and only last hitting. So, it's all about control, right? So I'm keeping control over my lane, even though, you know, Vega roamed and whatever happened. So I can stay ahead in XP, and everything's completely fine. So Shivana takes the dragon, and now I'm just slow pushing, so Vega misses this whole wave. If I forward it a bit, misses the cannon as well, forward a bit more. And now it turns into a slow push. So as you can see, I have more minions on my side of the lane, and he has less minions, so that means it's going to slow push into his tower. But I can still keep control and keep it slow, um, so that, you know, the slower you do these things in the minion waves, and the slower you last hit, the more control you have. So we see Shivana, but I don't want to rush there. Because it's running, it's pushing towards um, Vega. So if I move, I would miss this whole wave. So I use my W to try and clear this wave fast as possible. Because this is the last wave since it's on his side. And we're able to shove. We wouldn't be able to slow push another one anyways. And now we can move over. And, you know, Vega is stuck under tower with a big wave. So we just go in. We ult the Shivana. He flashes, which is fine. I tried to Q to Chaos, which was stupid. <laughs> Because I didn't get it anyways. And then we just run down the Orn. Holding my W for his flash. 
I want to show you guys how to play Zed against like mages in general. So this works against Vagar, but a lot of other mages like Orianna, Zeraf, everyone, like Syndra. So you want to hit the wave with your autos to make sure that, you know, you keep the push or you keep the wave even because they're going to use their spells in the wave. And then you use your WEQ as you try to zone them off. Right there, Vagar trolled his cage, which made it a lot easier. But that kind of thought process goes into every single matchup. Uh, Zed against Mage around level 7, 8, 9. So... I think it's good to keep that in mind and yeah so you don't want to use your spells you don't use your w on the wave you don't use your q on the wave you just alter the wave and then you walk around just juke a bit and after that you walk up try to get an angle to we and then q and go from there really here's a little way to dive vega so we walk up and he uses cage so that's great now i just walk up i want to auto e and then place the w Oh, I guess I just autoed and then placed W and then Alt and Q. So I got his flash, which is great for the next fight. We need to keep that in mind. So now we're level 11. We're very fed. We're doing the same thing we did before as we zoned them off and only last hit. And we keep in mind that he has no Alt. So a great combo is W, E into Alting. I miss my Qs, which is kind of sad. But the gist of it is, you know, you have a W and you have your Alt placement. Or when you're, where you're going to land after you Alt. So no matter where he places the cage... You're going to be able to dodge the stun because the cage isn't in a, you know, he can't make his cage smaller where he covers both with your W and where you land because he has no flash. You'll be able to make sure the distance is not too um, long or apart from each other. And that's a really good way of all inning Vega who has no flash. So now I have Voltaic and Hubris. I'm doing the same thing as I've done all game, which is just only last hit and use my W, E, Q to zone them off. Uh, my Q hit, so I take the W and I ult knowing that I have flash. And you have to watch where his cage is going to place if you want to do something like that. I was checking if his cage would stun me and I knew it wouldn't because he placed it too far away. And if it would, then I would flash away. And that's a combo you should only go for if you have flash, which I do. Uh, just in case he lands his cage properly. And now Shivana tries to defend me. I'm thinking maybe I can kill her actually because I have 3 level lead and I have Voltaic and Hubris. So we take the WW, Auto E, Q, Auto and then he's actually really low so I can just flash Auto E. Uday uses Herald and then he keeps running in. I actually really want to recall because I'm low health. But then I realize we can probably just kill him. He flashes and I get another kill. And we take the tower. I want to take the next wave because I'm very greedy. <laughs> but I know I can kill Shivana here because I'm very fed as well. So we just W away and then we use our spells. We take the W. I saw that Lulu used her ult in bot lane. If I didn't see that then I wouldn't have gone for it. So my team ends up killing Lulu and Orn while I'm top lane pushing and it's very very important to take these towers uh, especially like around minute 15 if you can but right now it's minute 20 which is also great it gives a lot of gold and like boosts your items right here with the Lulu comes I know he's by himself so we just combo him like that using W first because I know he has polymorph so that's very good to do against Lulu you use W Q W auto E and then you ult because if you alt, then he alts himself and he polymorphs, then it can get really annoying. So I want to show you guys the importance of sort of late game target selection in team fights. Right here I see that Lulu is just one combo away from dying from me. So I WQW flash auto E onto him straight away to make sure I kill him. Then I ult onto Zeri. Zeri's dead, but he flashes. And we combo everyone else because we placed another W. But the most important part of that team fight right there is that I go for the Lulu before he can use his ult on himself or anyone else. And it makes everything else much smoother. And yeah, that's the end of the game. So thank you so much for watching this game. I hope it was useful and all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Yeah.